condition of pavement surfaces is an important part of airport safety. At the minimum, a daily inspection should be performed of all paved areas used by aircraft. During this inspection, you should look for pavement lip problems, cracks, potholes, spalling, bumps and low spots, edge dams, foreign object debris, and rubber contamination. Pavement lips, the area between the full strength pavement and shoulders, or paved shoulders and safety areas, should not be more than three inches high. But while three inches is the maximum acceptable height of a lip, it should be no greater than necessary to allow water to drain from the pavement surface. This is particularly important because lips higher than three inches can damage aircraft tires and landing gear. Pavement lips at runway ends need careful examination since they are particularly susceptible to jet blasts and prop wash. The lips on the sides of runways and taxiways aren't usually affected by jet blasts or prop wash, but water draining from the pavement can cause side lip problems, so it's important to make sure that these lips not be more than 3 inches high. Looking for cracks is another part of the daily inspection routine. Some cracks, like this one, are actually wide enough to cause control problems for a plane. Most cracks are small and seem insignificant, but the problem with small cracks is that they are usually the beginning of serious pavement problems. For example, when water from storm runoff drains into cracks, the structural integrity of the pavement base and the sub-base can be damaged, and eventually, major cracks may develop. Consequently, all cracks found should be reported so that repairs can be made quickly. Potholes, like cracks, tend to grow. So during the daily inspection, you should be on the lookout for potholes of any size and report them so that they can be patched. Generally, any hole that is more than 5 inches across and 3 inches deep can cause an airplane to lose directional control or damage its tires or landing gear. After you report a problem, follow up to make sure the repair has been performed. Pavement spalling, where the surface is actually breaking up, is another area of concern. Spalling can easily result in the loss of directional control or even cause foreign object damage, or FOD, to an aircraft. For example, both jet engines and propellers can be badly damaged by pieces of loose pavement. Therefore, if you see any areas of spalling during your inspection, they should be reported so that the loose pavement can be removed. By the way, FOD isn't limited to loose pieces of pavement. In fact, most FOD to airplanes is caused by sloppy ramp practices by airport tenants. Inspectors should pick up isolated foreign objects on the spot, but substantial amounts of debris should be reported so that it can be cleaned up as soon as possible. Also, any foreign object debris found during inspection should be noted on the log, and where tenant responsibility can be readily determined, that tenant should be notified. Any bumps or low spots in the pavement should be reported, since bumps can affect directional control and obviously water can collect in a low spot, causing ponding. Touchdown zones on runways used by large aircraft are particularly susceptible to developing ruts. Standing water on runways is particularly dangerous since it can cause aircraft hydroplaning. And water also tends to obscure pavement markings, especially at night. Even small ponds of water are potential problems, since during winter they can freeze, resulting in patchy ice conditions that can cause uneven braking action. Ponding can also attract birds, which can pose a serious hazard to aircraft operations. Low spots aren't the only cause of ponding. Vegetation growing next to the pavement surface can block or slow down water drainage, creating edge dams. The ponding on this taxiway was caused by an edge dam. Needless to say, if you see any ponding during your daily inspection, it should be reported. But it's also a good idea to occasionally conduct a special inspection for ponding immediately after it has rained. While the inspector should look for rubber contamination during the daily inspections, rubber buildup is so gradual that there is not much noticeable change from day to day. So, periodic inspections should be conducted to look for rubber buildup. There are two simple tests that an inspector can use to check for rubber contamination. First, if the texture of the pavement feels smooth rather than gritty to the touch, or if rubber can be peeled off the pavement surface. The runway touchdown area and the sections of pavement next to them are the most likely areas for rubber contamination. Consequently, pavement markings can be obscured, and the rubber can also make the pavement slippery when wet. 
In summary, the important things you should be concerned about during your daily pavement inspection include improper lifts that are more than three inches high, any cracks because they could be the start of serious pavement problems, potholes, remembering that from little potholes bigger ones grow, breaking up of the pavement or spalling, low spots which can allow water to collect, edge dams created by vegetation along the side of the pavement, foreign object debris on runways, taxiways, and on ramps, and finally, rubber contamination, that slow buildup which can eventually make for obliterated markings and slippery runways. Knowing what to look for on or around the pavement can go a long way in making your operation a safe and efficient one.